So I want to talk about real quick your final exam for MAT 1033. So I have an announcement in Canvas that tells you the breakdown per module test, how many questions you should expect from that test. So uh, again, just some reminders here. Module 1, which is Chapter 2, you'll have four questions. You'll definitely have an order of operations from that section. Um, module 2, which was Chapter 3, 4, 9.4, has nine questions. I want to emphasize, a lot of people do not go back and review Equations of Lines, which is Chapter 4 um, uh, and Chapter 3. So finding your slope, knowing how to find the equation of line, um, knowing that you need to have a slope and a point to find an equation of a line. Um, so using the point-slope formula to actually finish the problem. Um, so please review those. We also did domain um, in Module 2, and we did it on two other tests, so domain is going to be there as well. I get a lot of people on the final that forget when they're dealing with um, graphing an inequality to shade. So remember that when you're graphing an inequality, so when you're looking back at the review, um, that you have to graph the boundary and then you have to shade it. It's two steps. Going to Module 3, which was Chapter 5 and 6, that was our factoring and polynomials section. So there will be seven questions from that. Make sure you go back over and understand how to factor and how to check your signs, for example. There's no excuse to get those wrong. Go back over your cube. Um, that Go back over factoring grouping because we had that on two different tests as well. Going to Module 4, um, this is where we solved our first quadratic in 6.7. So this is where we had it equal to 0 and we factored it and solved. On this test, if it doesn't specify what um, method to use, you use whichever method you want. So if you see a quadratic, you have a choice between factoring, completing the square, quadratic formula. If it tells you what technique, make sure you use that one. But if it doesn't say, it is your choice. So module four was where we again graphed, um, sorry, we solved our quadratic by factoring. Chapter seven was the one that y'all need to probably definitely go back over. That's our rational expressions and equations. So as always, you need to be comfortable. When do I keep a denominator and when do I have to um, multiply to get rid of it? If you're solving, you can multiply and clear out the denominator. If you're simplifying, you have to keep it and build them to match. We also did in there solving equations where you had to double check it wasn't a um, restriction um, in the beginning problem. And then um, we finished that with absolute value equations. Remember, absolute value equations, you expect two answers. And if you look back at the notes I sent you, you needed to make sure that it was in the correct form first, meaning the absolute value is by itself on one side. Then you needed to make sure the absolute value was equal to a positive number. Then you broke it up into two separate problems. Module 5 is chapter 10 and 11. So this is our radicals and then our solving using completing the square, square root property, and quadratic formula. Please make sure you have the format formats memorized. Please make sure you're comfortable on how to simplify radicals. Um, rationalizing denominators is a really important one because it shows us you know a lot of different techniques um, that are used, meaning adding, multiplying, subtracting, dividing. Make sure you break it into two separate pieces to put it in standard form. Also, when we are in complex numbers, uh, getting rid of that imaginary number in the denominator shows a lot of what you have to know for the whole section. So eight questions from that section. Total questions is 35 questions. Please don't spend too long on one problem. If you're not sure on it, skip it and come back to it, which most of y'all have done really well with during this semester. But I also want to stress, this is a make or break test for some of y'all, so you need to slow down, check yourself, show your work, be careful in distributing your signs, which is a super common mistake. Be careful, is the negative included in a exponent or not. Remember, if it's not in parentheses, it's not included. So two to five points a piece. Okay. Um, this is again in Canvas. Here is the PDF that I suggest printing off. Okay. I've also mentioned what are the most common questions that are missed on the test. 
So chapter 7 is solving a rational equation. Um, you're going to have to solve, solve a quadratic, so be comfortable with the techniques. One of the most common missed problems, though, is the chapter 3 and 4 information where you're solving for an equation of a line. You're finding your slope. You're just determining if they're perpendicular or parallel. I did spell that wrong. I apologize. So perpendicular or parallel means solve them for y to get them in y equals mx plus b form and compare the slope once they're in y equals mx plus b form. Complex fractions, which was on test four, um, really common one to make mistakes on, and I again sent um, actually problems with me doing it. Um, you have them on, um, on an announcement for the, those pieces. Domain, we've done it on three tests, so it's gonna be on this test. Make sure you remember, we assume it's all reals and we look for restriction. Denominator cannot equal zero. The radical, what's underneath the radical, has to be greater than or equal to zero. Factoring a cube, no excuse. Don't come in and not know how to factor a cube. Review factoring by grouping, because some people just miss that. This bottom link will take you to the final exam page which has that same PDF and it has videos for each problem. So when you go to this video page, it's going to have the, the questions labeled over here so you can scroll through and do them. But please try to do the questions before you look at the videos because again, you have to be confident come test day to do it. So looking at this PDF so this is the PDF we have okay so again order of operations number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen you know those are all simplified they're from different test material but it's really important to make sure you're careful number five and six the difference between a negative in front and a negative in exponent negative exponents mean change the location negative number is just a negative number section two is solving equations and again these are from multiple different um, test materials if it's a quadratic which if we look at number 16 and 17 20 21 those problems they don't tell you what technique you can factor it use the square root property quadratic formula your choice 19, 14, both of those are rational equations, so you have to be careful. You can clear your fractions out, but you have to um, make sure you check that it's not a restriction when you're done. Absolute value should give you two solutions. You have three problems to, to practice with completing the square. You have two problems to practice with the quadratic formula. Okay. Remember when we're solving an inequality, we have to flip the direction of the inequality if we multiply or divide by negative. 32, 33, 34, that doesn't tell you what technique, so you can just use substitution or elimination, but remember you're getting an ordered pair. Um, so it's x comma y in parentheses. Solving here um, for a literal uh, solution here. So remember I suggest clearing your fraction first before you worry about what you're solving for. Once you've cleared your fractions, box what you're solving for so that you can see what you want to get by itself. Section six is starting your factoring. Has multiple different types. You can use whatever technique you want to. Section seven is dealing with our rational equations, which was test four um, for number 51, 52, and 53. 54 and 55 actually 54 through 57 are dealing with our polynomials which um, was from test 3. 58 and 59 go back to rational equations which was test 4. Starting with number 60. We are dealing with ra um, sorry, radicals and, and, and exponents with fractions which is test 5 material. Complex fractions was test four. Um, test four. Here's test four. This is going back to our radicals, which is test five material. Complex numbers is on test five. 
76. All these problems were from test 2, and this is the area I told you you need to definitely go back and review your formulas that you need to have memorized for slope. How do I get an equation of a line? How do I decide if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Okay. These are the ones people miss because they don't bother to go over, back over those pieces. So make sure you double check and understand how to do that. Here's an example of my domain questions. This is solving for a function, and we had this on two different tests for number 89. Number 90 and 91 used to be information we taught in this class, and we no longer teach it. So please cross those out. You will not be doing them. So you have four more word problems here that we've done throughout. So perimeter was, I believe, on test one, our coins as well. Our um, work problems were from test four. Um, and distance rate time we took actually on two different tests, so it depends on how it's set up. Okay. I recommend the chart. Okay. Be careful. Make sure you decide if it's the same time or some of those pieces and review those ideas. Like I said, the videos are there if you need an actual example. My math lab has a final exam review. so. I still say that the PDF is the most important one. We put every single type of problem that's on the final is on that. We actually wrote that one up. We then decided that y'all probably wanted to practice more time, so we made the, the um, final exam review in my math lab that you can do as many times as you need to um, to practice those types. Please send questions to me, and I will be happy to answer them, um, even when I'm off on break. So. Please don't hesitate to ask and I will try to clarify if I can.